This is Coast to Coast AM. Now, here's your guest host, Connie Willis. Thank you for joining us. You're listening to Coast to Coast AM. My name's Connie Willis. That's Men Without Hats and Safety Dance. Another great tune to dance to, to move to, to have fun. Memories for sure. Hey, it was great to talk with uh, Stan Larimer last hour, talking uh, the Godfather of Dish Airs. And some of, I had so many questions, I just couldn't get them all answered. And I thank all of you for being a part of that and writing me and all that kind of stuff. I know a lot of people were saying, well, nobody can use you know, just another Just another tip out there for those of you. You can um, trade out things. Like, let's say I wanted to do some, somebody wanted me to do an audio book for them or some sort of narration for them. You know, I'm talking about doing a trade with, uh, you know, some bit shares or a Bitcoin or something like that. So you can do that kind of stuff. And you can sell, maybe you're doing a yard sale, and instead of taking money, say, you know, I'll take a, some cryptocurrency instead. And you see people tipping people all the time, you know, when you want to say, oh, you did a good job on your YouTube channel or this or that. You know, I'm going to give you, I'm going to throw some uh, bit shares or Bitcoin or whatever your way. You can do that stuff now. So, you know, you can play around with it, and you can trade out your massages or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. So. So uh, it doesn't have to be total business. It's kind of fun that way, too. Everybody's having a good time with that. So I thank him for showing up. Mark Sargent is going to be coming up for us next year. We're going to be talking about the Flat Earth and Antarctica and how that works together. Just a quick reminder to be a Coast Insider for those of you that say, Hey, Connie, can I listen to that show tomorrow? Because I wanted to listen to you tonight. I really want to hear about Flat Earth or the cryptocurrency. But you know what? I've got this great big party I'm going to. Can I listen to you tomorrow? Well, you absolutely can. But you got to be a Coast Insider. Okay, so it's only 15 cents a day. You get tons of podcasts, tons of downloads. You can listen to the past shows 24-7, high quality, live or demand. You are set. Audio streams all delivered nicely. I mean, it sounds really, really good. And you can listen to it on your mobile device as well as your computer. And it's a lot of fun. You get uh, There's different chats with the host. I got to do one of the live chats before. That was a good time. Special guests come in there. So you get all sorts of neat little things, and you get to vote on stuff, and we get to learn a lot about what you think. And, um, you know, it's really cool. So be a Coast Insider. It's hip to be a Coast Insider. Sign up by going to coasttocoastam.com. We have stations all over the U.S., North America, Puerto Rico, Guam, and by satellite. We are Coast to Coast AM. I'm your host, Connie Willis. And, yep, we're going to go down a rabbit hole. Yep. This one's a big one. And it can, what I've been told, it kind of goes a long way. It's kind of a deep hole. People are still falling. No one's hit rock bottom. <laughs> you better watch it. You, you might not. Maybe there's no bottom. But what, who we're going to talk to is Mark Sargent. And Mark has started his career playing computer games professionally, okay? That's, that's, that's cool in itself. That's fun. Well, from there, he spent like 20 years troubleshooting and helping to train people in software. And I guess it was in 2014 that he started getting into this thing called the Flat Earth Theory. And through all sorts of research, he's a conspiracy guy now. And, and, and he wasn't thinking about this one. He got into it. And he started doing his research, and he was like, hmm, maybe there's something to this. And so he started doing something on a, a, his YouTube channel where he – it was called Flat Earth Clues. It's a series of videos, and it talks about the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside a Truman Show, like the movie that you've seen, and uh, how it's like an enclosed system and how it's been hidden from the public since 1956. So, Mark, welcome back to Coast to Coast. I know you've been here before. Hi, how are you? I am fine, Connie, and thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm excited about this. When I first uh, spoke with you to say hey and ask you about coming on, mm -hmm. I felt like I knew you already. You just have this uh, a great presence about you, and I, you know, I think you could actually sell. What, what do people say? Ice to an Eskimo kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, you just. <laughs> The way it is, I think people will say the same at the end of this uh, show. But uh, um, how did you get into the flat Earth theory? I mean, I understand that you've been into conspiracies. You're right. into that. Right. But how? How this one? Uh, conspiracy boredom, if that term is actually a real thing. <laughs> that's yes. that's that's really how it started. I was into conspiracies since the early '90s. Before that, I was completely naive 
dumb blonde growing up in a very rural island up in north of Seattle and saw JFK in the theater in the early 90s and I was like, wow, holy smokes, people actually lie. <laughs> like, like it's actually, yeah, right? there's, there's such a thing as a conspiracy. Didn't believe in them. And then over the next 20 years, really delved into it so much to where everything was getting redundant. And I, I literally was like, okay, what, what else is there? I, I think I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy out there. What else is there? And, you know, Flat Earth is always in the corner. Flat Earth isn't something new. We all know what it is, right? It's like, it's just, you know, we just wave it off. It's like, get out of here. You know, it's like, get out of here, stupid Flat Earth. I don't want to talk to you. And then all of a sudden I did. It's like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll look into it. So summer of 2014, I looked at a video made by some German guy who was talking about how the flight paths in the southern hemisphere don't make any sense they're they're all over the place the, the connections are just too weird and they uh, the routes don't make any sense at all and i go okay that's that's pretty interesting he goes here's where it gets strange he goes it only makes sense if the world isn't a sphere if it's actually flat and i was going okay that's that's intriguing but i should be able to shoot this thing down in a weekend you know i can i can debunk some, some conspiracies if i want and nine months later, <laughs> I'm sitting there at my computer, just banging my head on the computer. And I'm saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then I woke up at the beginning of 2015, February 10th. I remember the day, uh, 3.30 in the morning. And had that Jerry Maguire moment where I said, you know what? I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. I can't do it. So... I needed help, so I wrote a series. I wrote my very first one. It was the the Flat Earth Clues introduction, and I put it out on the internet. Never even made a video and and put it out there before. You know, made it, narrated it myself, wrote it, made some silly slides, and used a free software program, put it up on YouTube, and said, "Okay, somebody help me out here. Tell me where I went wrong. Tell me how you know it's a globe." And thought for sure that some academic was going to shoot this thing down, somebody with a with a master's degree in astronomy or astrophysics. And instead, the opposite started happening, where people were calling me, they wanted to know more, and people were calling me, they were subject matter experts in, in their respective fields. And the people wanted to talk about interviews. And it's like, what? It's, it's like, you're not helping me. I need sleep. I need, I need to get this thing out of my head. <laughs> And so I made I made more clues. It's like okay, here's where here's why really, you know I started making more and more of these clues, and I made my first seven clues in eight days, and went from you know no views. I made a Creative Commons license, put my phone number out there, my email address. I know I can't believe it, Mark. Oh my gosh! <laughs> when I first saw it, I went, oh this guy's got his uh, uh, email. Okay, I can contact him. What is that? Is that his phone number? Is that? Is yeah. his phone number on this uh, uh, documentary? Is that his phone number on the YouTube channel? Oh yeah, I yeah. can't believe it. And I called you, and there you were. <laughs> yeah, used to, I used to answer the phone directly. Now I have to screen it because there's there's so many calls. Yeah. It's it's still the same number though. You can call and the phone's sitting right next to me. Uh, and because of that, because I made myself accessible, I didn't even, I didn't monetize my channel for the first 15 months. I didn't put thumbs up or uh, thumbs, thumbs down. I know I made a Creative Commons license. Anybody uh, could take it. Uh, well, who knew? Who knew? And they did. They did take it. Oh yeah, people grabbed them and made. In fact, I had so many people calling me up and said, "Oh yeah, I loved your movie." And I thought it was a fluke. It was like, oh, well, you know, 15, 20 minutes isn't really a movie. And it's like, no. And then people saying, I loved your two-hour movie. I was going, what two-hour movie are you talking about? And then they would send me the link. And it's like, wait, you're not this guy? And there were a couple people that took my clues. They mashed them up. You know, they, they spliced them together and, and made them into a two-hour movie. One one of the videos was called uh, Under the Dome Full Documentary. Under the Dome. Yeah. That's how I found you. And yeah. I was surprised. I thought this wasn't you. I thought this was you. That was yeah. not That was not me. And the other one was called... Uh, they're, they, I know. <laughs> they're Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. And those guys have millions of hits. <laughs> And it's not, I, I mean, it's me, it's, it's totally me, but it's not, it's not my channel. I have nothing to do with it. And, but people were calling me because the phone number is embedded in the video. And so people would just start, started calling me. So that's how, that's how I got into it. And here we are two years later, national conference just happened, uh, tons of subscribers and lots of people that are doing it. And, and, uh, it's, and coast know, to coast. 
tagging you. I'm going to put you on Blue Rock Talk. I mean, this is great, right? Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into a little bit more, um, Mm -hmm. you got to tell me, because I don't want to forget, but on our, you know, even on coasttocoastam.com, we have the story of the guy that got the homemade rocket. So before we get into I want you to. I want to remember to talk about this dude because that's happening this weekend. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Like- Mad Mad Mike Hughes. Uh, he was a guy that approached us about doing. He was. He's a. He's a daredevil by by trade, uh, and he started as like a NASCAR driver, and then he became a limousine driver. But he was kind of like one of those evil can evil types. And Wait a minute, he was a NASCAR guy. Then he went limousine. What? Well, he's he's old. He's older. I mean, I think he retired from NASCAR. He, he's I think sixty two. So he, Come but he's, him. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so he always wanted to be a stunt man and, and do this stuff. And he, he's done other rocket jumps before, but he really wanted to do something special. And he knew that, that flat earth was very, very uh, trending. And we, um, we've been doing some crowdfunding stuff and he's going like, you know, he, he came to us for funding, basically one of the, one of our other guys. And we did a thing and, and gave him some money and it's like, hey, let's put a big flat earth sticker on the side of this rock. He goes, sure, why not? You know, and he became a flat earther as, as but he hasn't been in that long. And he was supposed to launch during the summer and he didn't. He, he postponed and it, actually the timing worked out really well. It's Thanksgiving weekend and yeah. the national news. I mean, everybody's running this story because it's a good it's a good, interesting story for Thanksgiving weekend. Let's let's face it. Like you know, not that many football games on on Thanksgiving, and it's like, and everybody picked this up. Associated Press and Fox. If you can think of it, they they covered it, and it's happening supposedly this Saturday. However, I have an update for you, almost exclusive, yeah. just for you. Uh, Yay. The, de- the Department of oh, Bureau of Land something basically it got enough attention that some some of the higher up government people called the parks departments in California and said um where is he launching from exactly cuz what approval has he gotten to do this cuz he's jumping over a town he's going to jump over Ambroy California which is off the old route 66 under Whitney Highway 40 and there's nobody living there yeah, there's like five people in the whole town but he was supposedly going to launch i think out of a park like a like a public area like a government owned area and so they didn't give him approval so he's like okay uh, and the Washington Post just mentioned this today to where he's going to go to a private residence now with acreage and launch it from there. I don't know what that will do to his trajectory I, and, and his landing zone. I don't know. But, oh, but yeah, we, we should probably mention this. This is not, despite what the headlines say, this is not a research test at all. This is, it has, we're, he's not testing anything. He's only going up a couple thousand feet. I mean, you know, airplanes fly at 30,000 feet. You can go up to a mountain. A small mountain. What's he doing? He's going to go up and then jump uh, out with a parachute? No. Oh, no, no, I, no, I no. I thought he was kind of hitting, trying to hit the top of the globe. No, 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 no. No, somebody, some, it started out as just a, an awareness stunt, a, a media thing, and more than anything. It's like, oh, raise awareness for flat earth. That's all it was supposed to be. But because the sticker was so prominent on the side of this thing, somebody, and I can't remember which newspaper it was, said, oh, well, he must be trying to prove the flat earth. And everybody else ran with it to to where now i mean and we're we're you know the flatters community is going crazy we're going no 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 he's not he's not testing anything he in fact he's not jumping out either by the way he's locked in this is this is straight out of evil can oh. ni- 1974 snake oh, river my. snake river yeah, yeah where he's locked in most people don't know evil can if he would have hit the water inside that canyon he would have drowned there's you're not getting out of that thing and so though that's the whole point you're not getting out of the rocket you're not going to be thrown from the rocket so he's just going to go up the parachute's going to pop out the back like a drag racer and he's going to float down to the ground that's that's all it's supposed to be but wow. my, my lord and honestly i thought yeah a few media th- places would run it i didn't think associated <laughs> press would run it i didn't think fox news and abc and nbc and it was on gq it was Forbes magazine. It's like, why? Wow. Why are you guys? Because it's an interesting, kooky yeah. sort of story. Uh, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with the no, research. Coast would have it. Hey, we're there. We're, well, we're uh, there. well, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, but it's it is an interesting story. I'll give you this, and the picture is perfect. It's this giant okay. red rocket. He's standing in front of it with sunglasses. You know, he he looks very Californian. His jeans and what looks like to be like a garage mechanic shirt. 
uh, interesting guy, and and I'm glad that we're that we're tied to him. Well, I have to, you know, can't wait to see how it goes. But yeah, no, he's not testing anything. He's it's. I really appreciate the fact that everybody's making it into a flat Earth research test, even though no one's actually asked him what test it would be. But that's what the media does. Well, so. So. Um, well hi. Okay, flat Earth. Yeah. The way you've got it pictured in my mind from what you've said, what I've seen. Mm -hmm. and watched um is i mean how far could he go before it would like go pink you know hit the oh pink. he'd have to go he'd have to go a long 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 way i mean if his rockets only got up two thousand feet do you remember uh air, your average commercial airliner caps out at about 10 miles spy planes if you believe the military caps out at about 20 miles he'd have to go up i mean someone would have to go up way way higher People ask me all the time, it's like, well, how high would you have to go before you hit the uh, the ceiling of this thing? And I'm thinking, you know, judging by just the public military tests that they did, the uh, the high altitude atomic testing that was done from 58 to 62, where they were just firing nukes straight up for four years, uh, minimum would have to be like 400 kilometers, if you believe the, the military. Some people say it's less, and it's like, well, I mean, it could be less, but it's it's definitely not below commercial airline traffic and or or spy planes i mean remember spy planes only that's only 20 miles that's not very far so. well what's the what's the man's name oh mike hughes mike hughes you, well mike you, we wish you the best and uh for your safety as well and everything turns out right and that he gets to do it tomorrow do you have a time uh no no and i don't think he has a time either i mean because now he's got to go to somebody's property i mean we're not talking it's not a real high-tech rocket i mean he's literally pulling this thing on the back of a trailer and then you know winching it up and just letting it go and it's and it's not even new tech it's using literally the same tech that evil knievel did in 74 in snake river it's a superheated steam so he may set a record a world record for jumping the town there may be a world record as far as the steam, the, the, that type of rocket launch. Uh, but yeah, Godspeed, Mike. Well, <laughs> I hope you yeah. don't I'm die. I'm him the best. Don't die. <laughs> no, yeah, okay, well, we'll put it that way. Exactly, yeah, right? yeah, it'd be bad. I do not <laughs> want him to auger that thing into the ground. No. That would be, that would yeah. be bad. So. Oh, wow. Well, looking forward to that and, you know, keep us in touch, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, 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 I'll give you the updates as soon as I get them. I don't think he, honestly, between you and me, I don't think he's going to launch tomorrow. I think he's going to wait until Monday, uh, even though the media has been badgering him. You know, as you can imagine, everyone, once they figure out how to get a hold of him, people were calling him and calling him. And so I'm thinking, okay, Sunday he might do it. It'd be perfect if he did on Sunday for the Monday, you know, media to, to jump off of. But... I don't know. I don't think he'll do it till Monday, personally. That's just me. Well, I think it's pretty cool, and what a great weekend that it happened. You know, you and I discussing being on coast tonight. I mean, we didn't have any idea. I mean, I didn't have any idea that this was happening, so I thought, oh, what a great, you know, coincidence. And maybe it's not a coincidence. Oh, I don't think it's a coincidence. coincidence. <laughs> right? No, it's, it's a cool thing, and it, and it eclipsed all the other Flat Earth new headlines that were happening. It was just, it was so fast that how the, just this waves, I just kept seeing the same picture of that red rocket freaking everywhere I went. I know, it's everywhere. I, and listen, we only got about a minute before we have to take a break. Oh, okay. So I don't want to ask you some of the questions that I want to ask you yet, because I know it's going to take a little longer. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, uh, you know, if you can just say it in like a less than a minute here. Sure. You, you just uh, were at a big conference, correct? How did that go? I mean, you got more and more people believe oh, in this than most people would think correct that was oh yeah this is not this is not some flash in the pan we had the first national flat earth conference in the history of 241 history year history of the united states in raleigh north carolina it just happened the beginning of this month i was there with i don't know 500 700 80, i don't even know how many people a lot of people from around the country and different countries and i was interviewed i think 14 times in two days and was not expecting that much media. It was an amazing production, lots of speakers from, from YouTube channels, and everything was very professional, and it was great. You guys can check out all the highlights by going just about anywhere online and just typing in Flat Earth Conference. Yeah, and what, uh, just, just uh, what was your website too, Enclosed? Enclosedworld.com. I love it. We're going to talk more about that. I just love that name, Enclosed World. Right there, that gives you that visual, that theater of the mind that radio does for you. So everybody stick yeah. around. We're talking with Mark Sargent. We're going to be talking about Antarctica as well as Flat Earth. 
combined together. What's that mean? More to come. Stay with us. It's going to be very interesting. Coast to Coast AM. Quiet Riot on Coast to Coast AM. Did you ever think it? Yeah. you got to tune in to Coast to Coast AM. Cotty Willis here, jamming out on the holiday weekend, thinking about maybe some more turkey sandwiches. I don't know. I don't know. I just got to take a little bit of a break. I've had a lot. I <laughs> hope you are enjoying your holiday weekend and you've uh, filled your bellies up with some wonderful, wonderful food and had some great time with family and friends. I want to remind you about Paranormal Date. Don't forget about that. I know that, you know, around the table people were being concerned about what do we do if politics comes up. We don't want to talk about that. Let's avoid it. Well, then why not talk about UFOs, Bigfoot, you know, psychic uh, stuff, uh, remote viewers, things like that. (laughs) <laughs> See what happens then with some people. You and I both know that we want to talk with the people that will stay there and not run, right? These are great conversations. It's a, it's a joy. Uh, it, it stretches the mind. It, it you know, it helps us figure out who we are as people, you know, and, and to this earth, whether it's flat or round, whatever you want to think. So paranormal date, if you're single and you're still like, you know, golly, I wish I could find somebody that could talk, you know, about these things, that's what paranormal date is all about. Free to sign up, check it out, use code GEORGE for a discount to uh, get further involved. And we're nearing 70,000 people on here, so I'm sure you can find someone to talk to, even if it's just a friend. But, again, if anything happens to you really special, we want to know about it. We really do. It'll be fun to talk about your story. ParanormalDate.com. You can go there. Uh, if you're into the conspiracy world, go to ConspiracyDate.com. You are definitely not alone. I love that. You're not alone. But if you want to know more and you forgot, you know, if you're going to forget where to go, just go to CoastToCoastAM.com. another very interesting show here on Coast to Coast AM, the real theater of the mind happening tonight. Connie Willis here along with Mark Sargent talking about the flat earth theory. Now, Mark, I want you to use the theater of the mind. I know you can be good at this. I know you've got that creativity. All right. Give us a visual of this flat earth, how you see it. It really depends what kind of person you are because different things resonate with different people. So if you're older, if I said a planetarium, that might work. If I said terrarium, if I said a sports stadium, most people would know what that that, that looks like. Uh, my favorite would be the Truman Show from the 1998 movie with Jim Carrey, which is kind of a cross between a, a giant sports stadium and a planetarium. So... We're talking about a flat disk, which is enclosed by some sort of dome structure. And it's very, very, very large. Uh, so large that most of our history, we, di- we didn't even, even the authorities didn't know where they were until the United States and the Soviet Union both figured it out in around 1956, 1957. And when they found the outer marker out in an- Antarctica, and figured out, you know what? Let's just keep a lid on this thing. Again, how we do you did... know that? How do you know that that they saw that then? Well, when I was doing research on this, when I when I was looking at when I first was digging into the whole flat Earth theory, first I off I started off with hollow Earth, which I thought was very interesting in, in itself. Which was you know the, yeah, and it's some... not the same thing. It's it is not. not it is not the same. It is not the same thing. Uh, hollow Earth is a whole subterranean system journey to the center of the Earth. You know, big caverns where entire civilizations can live. But I followed a guy uh, named Admiral Richard Byrd, who was the youngest admiral in the United States Navy, made admiral at age 41, who went to the North Pole in 1926 in a rickety plane. And then what was strange was the military basically had him going to Antarctica from 1928 up until his death, his eventual death in 1957. And... They were down there with a whole bunch of other countries, and he was basically flying around there for the better part of 30 years looking for something. And he flew his own planes, and planes got a lot better from 1928 until the 1950s. And he went down for one more mission in 1955, 1956, which is called Operation Deep Freeze. Most people in the conspiracy world are going, where have I heard this name before? You would have heard about him because he's most known for Operation High Jump which was in 1946, right after World War II, supposedly rooting out the last of the Nazi bases. And at that part, 
part of that was was true, which was that Nazi Germany was the only country that was down in Antarctica during the World War. Everybody else had, had gone off to fight, but they were down there, you know, the whole Indiana Jones thing. So he comes on television, Admiral Byrd does in 1954, and it's a fantastic clip. I recommend anybody watch it if they can. Goes on a, a 60 minutes show of the day and says that Antarctica is this untapped resource. It, the place is basically made out of money. There's coal enough for the entire world. There's uranium, there's minerals, there's oil, gas, all that stuff. And they're setting up for Operation Deep Freeze. And then when he gets down there, he, so whatever he discovers, and yes, I know I'm connecting the dots a little bit here. Whatever he discovers changes everything that every government did from that point on. The world changed literally from 1957 on to where they sealed off Antarctica, all the countries that were down there, uh, Russia, UK, Argentina, Chile, Australia, the, the, the US, everybody who was down there left the ice as fast as they could. And in their wake, they instituted the night, what's now the 1959 Antarctic Treaty. They drew that up almost immediately that said Antarctica is off limits forever. Mm. The general population does not know this. Now, does this mean, Connie, that you can't go down there? No, of course not. You can go down, you can book a trip tomorrow because some of your people are probably scrambling on a website right now. It's like, I can totally I, go to Antarctica. I know people have, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. If you want to book a trip to Antarctica, 15 grand from America, you could do it. You could go down there, have your picture taken with penguins, go to the peninsula and have, you know, wear some orange safety gear. It'd be really fun. But you as a company, as a corporation, cannot go down there. It doesn't matter. And that's the, that was what one of the really weird parts for me when I was, when I was looking at Antarctica was no corporation, no matter how big, no matter how many liquid assets they have, no, not only does nobody own Antarctica, which is amazing in itself. Look, every piece of property that we know is owned by somebody except for Antarctica. Uh, but no oil and gas company go down there. No mineral company. Nobody can go down there ever. I mean, this is the only unbroken tre treaty in the history of our civilization, not even up for debate until the year 2041. And it gets even stranger. Oh, so 2041. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not even, I mean, that's when, when it's, you know, that's just a thing they kicked down the road, I'm sure, with 20, if 2041 actually came around. It'd be like, nope, nope, we're going to extend another 30 years. No, what's stranger than that is that not only is a corporation not, not allowed to go down there, you're not even supposed to talk about it. Meaning, if I'm the head of Exxon Mobil, right, I've got gobs of liquid cash. If I want to frack in your backyard tomorrow, I could probably make that happen. You know, it's just a question of how many people I have to bribe to do it. You know, county commissioners, mayors, governors, senators, congressmen, we all know how the game works. But, and and if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to get into Antarctica, I mean, I can go to the Washington Post, New York Times, I can run full page ads every month. How great would it be for ExxonMobil to go to Antarctica? You never see those stories. Nobody protests. Nobody complains. And we're not, not just America, any country. I mean, UK and the Soviet Union, they needed the resources after World War II. Nope, they don't get to talk about it. China, nobody protests. It's one of those things at the highest echelon. Antarctica is sealed off. And, and your listeners are probably saying, why? Why in the world would be seal, sealed off? Because somewhere out there in the ice and snow is the outer marker. Uh, think think about this. The first thing people say, well, you know, why doesn't the water fall off? It's like, no, no, no. The Antarctic coastline is 200 feet straight up of ice, and then it plateaus up at about 14,000 feet. It's the most unique continent we have. But somewhere out in that ice and snow is the outer barrier. It is the edge of the dome, the bear, whatever you want to call it. The edge is out there, and they don't want to even take a chance. That's what makes this uh, this particular conspiracy bigger than money. There's very few conspiracies. Someone's that... seen that, though, or they just <laughs> think that? It is, no, there are no pictures. There are no whispers. All we know is the countries People that were... Scrammed. Yeah, everyone, scrammed at one yeah, point. Yeah, everyone was there. Think about this. We all know that money and uh, power, is that's what rules this civilization. Mm -hmm. Tell me when something is bigger than money. Where it's like, you know what, it doesn't matter how much money is involved, everyone off the ice right now. And that's because you would, like you know, um, let's say you had a petroleum company. You would have helicopters and planes and trucks and things. Eventually they would start encroaching, they would start encroaching, and sooner or later you'd have to have this fail-safe line and say, look, you can't go past this for national security. 
and let's say a plane did go off course well there's a loose end you got to tie up so they decide you know what let's just call the whole let's shut it all down just let's put the gates up lock it put a padlock on that thing nobody gets to go run and run around there for free again you can go down there have your picture taken but to uh do anything there from a uh, corporation standpoint nope never ever happened some people say well you know it's it's green you know it's the the uh, environmental issues it's just environmental things that are happening no 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 greenpeace wasn't even formed until 1972 1959 there was no such thing as environmentalism nobody cared you know we, we what didn't about care. What about the other thought of uh, you're saying it's the edge of the earth? What about uh, the people that say no? They found aliens. There's aliens there. There's all this stuff going on. There's oh sure, sure, spaces. sure. Spaces. What about that? Oh, of Maybe course. I mean that that, that actually dovetails that. that dovetails in fairly well because one of the next questions that people ramp up to is okay. Let's say we are living in a giant enclosed world, right? Who built it? Well, then you got to look as, all right, well, the builders are the builders out there. Look at all the weird things that happened in 2017 with all the weird world leaders that were going down there for whatever reason. Uh, it could have, now, what I'm saying is people, again, there's some big concepts here. And I know this channel deals with some alien stuff. I'm not saying that there aren't aliens. I'm just saying uh, there's th yeah, definitely things flying around and there's other civilizations and other species and other advanced races, sure. I'm just saying that they don't come from Mars and Jupiter. I'm saying they're coming from outside of this place, that they're probably right next to us. They're not millions and billions of light years away or, you know, the next planet over. They are literally, uh, uh, literally quite on the other side of this. In fact, they could be living in another version of this or they could be in here with us. Yeah, do you think that we're like uh, some 16 or like, you know, some sixth grade alien kids project, like a little ant farm? Uh, possibly. It really depends because I, when I look at this place, when I was trying to build it out in my head, the whole thought experiment, uh, I realized that we were not the first people to rent this apartment, not by any stretch. So oh, I love that. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's love listening to you. I really do. You're a joy to listen to, and that's funny. Rent this is not the only. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> what, the, the, we, we literally aren't the, the first group to rent this apartment. And the reason is, is because we find evidence of previous civilizations. Look, our unbroken right, history right. Only, only goes back like 5,000 years. But yet we find sunken cities off of India and sunken cities off of Japan. And how old are the pyramids? And are the Bosnian pyramids real? And Bimini Road and Atlantis. And oh, my God, you go on and on. So the question is, what version are we? Are we, you know, are we version seven or are we version nine? And, and then it's like, okay, who were the previous versions and what did they have to deal with? And I have no doubt that, that there was another civilization that had to move off before we got in. And when our group has run its course, there'll be someone in, in behind us. And not necessarily a sinister thing, like the end of the world, kind of like a school, like you were mentioning, like a sixth grade, only let's call it high school. Uh, you know, as when you're a senior, it's like, yeah, seniors, great. You know, you graduated. Love you. You're great. But you got to go because we got another freshman class coming in. You, get, you know, you don't have to go home, but you got to get the heck out of here type of thing. And that's where I think we are. The only question is, are there remnants of previous civilizations that survived or, or just hanging around? Did they go subterranean? Did they go somewhere else and are, are a part of this? I know that they aren't allowed, you know, for obvious reasons, to interact with us directly because it would change our history. You, know, you can't just land a spaceship in the middle of downtown anywhere and come out, shake hands, take pictures, and, and sign a few autographs, take some selfies, because it would, you, know, you could potentially create a whole new religion. So, uh, you know, they, they seem to... to Phoenix at one point in 79. I think they tried. Yes. People still, you know, didn't... Yeah. You know. Anyway. Yeah. Well, anyway. So, okay, so so the Flat Earth, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, I do know a lot of the things that we have been told are theories. Right. Especially one of the things is we can only dig down so far on the planet, and, right. you, you know, before things it collapses so you got to build you got to dig out further to go deeper or it will collapse and further right. out and deeper right. and i know that the center of the earth what they believe is the core is only speculation it's only theory nobody knows no one's ever been able to go down there right. to say exactly what's what's Abs there. absolutely right uh right? the core so, yeah 
science makes massive leaps of faith. And I, I'm not I'm not attacking science directly and saying that science is a bad thing. I'm saying that they tend to make leaps, even though they claim they don't, they make leaps leaps of faith like anybody else. Think of the things you can prove right now. You know, water is wet, fire burns, you can drop something that falls to the floor. You can test these right in your home or in your car right now. Uh, but when it comes to things like the shape of the earth or the core of the earth, these are things you are told. Uh, the core of the earth especially we all know the cross sections that we see in science books you know where it shows the red band and the orange and the yellow and that white center but each seems to be exactly a thousand miles thick for whatever reason but most people don't understand that you know and supposedly it's four thousand miles if you dug down right now it'd be four thousand miles to the center of the earth supposedly so what's that based on what's the deepest hole ever drilled is it you know is it a thousand miles is it a hundred miles because remember one percent is 40 miles the deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles or 12 kilometers Amazing. if you're canadian yeah. and it's yeah. like okay eight miles so what exactly are you showing with the cross section and what i found out was they used to back in the day a long time ago put little little small fine prints underneath those those cross sections says oh yeah we're speculating we're expanding we don't really know and then at some point they decided you know what let's just get rid of the fine print well yeah. that's that's that's, that's the a problem <laughs> that's a dangerous thing because now it's like okay a nine-year-old just saw that and then he saw it as he's graduating from high school it's like oh yeah that's what the core of the earth looks like they have no it's like even if you could con try to convince me by the way that ground penetrating radar w was doing this it's like okay yeah i'm not i'm not buying it for one and even if you could convince me the core of the earth why are you showing me the core of neptune and Jupiter and Saturn. It's like you don't even have anything there, let alone high tech stuff that you could actually pull this off with. It's it's there. Science makes massive, massive leaps. And let me here throw a quote out for you, real quick. Neil deGrasse Tyson, probably the most famous physicist out there, you know, guy with the microphone. He said he still says on stage every, even probably now tonight as we speak, he says that science is true whether or not you believe in it. It is one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard in my life. And it's like, if, for every, it's, if, if I ever meet Neil Tyson, I'll say, look, uh, tell me about Kelvin. If you're wondering what how that name sounds familiar, that's the guy, at, absolute temperatures are measured in Kelvin. Kelvin, who was the father of thermodynamics, said in 1900 that heavier than air flight is impossible and we will only have balloons in the sky literally said and he was not shy about saying this he said this for years and then three years before he died we started making airplanes so what do you tell me about science is right no matter what don't don't yeah, don't, i haven't don't heard that me. name in a long time by the way Ke you're right i was like kelvin kelvin i know kelvin that name. yeah <laughs> absolute so absolute zero is measured in kelvin and and yeah he was a real he, he said the aeronautical society is not something i would ever put a molecule of faith in and it's like it's, don't don't uh, science lacks vision and it really bothers me when they do that so don't tell me what the what the shape of the world is what i'm saying is the science is such an institution and so stubborn because why would they hide it why would they hide it? it's like well because they were talking about that narrative for 400 and something years from copernicus all the way up until now what i'm proposing is like okay let's say they did get high enough in a rocket and turned around and actually looked and saw what the earth would look like would they tell the public what they saw not if it went against science no they would not uh, institutions protect their own think about every all the corporations that protect their own the old saying and that is if the settlement cost is less than the price of a recall we don't do a recall science you know will protect their own at, at all costs and that's what they did here and i challenge anyone remember how do you know i, I know we've got to go a break eventually but how do you know you're on you're on a globe right now it's because you were told it's not because you know it's because you heard this in a science book because you saw the globe in your classroom when you were six years old you graduated hopefully you know 12 years later and the globe was still there and that's 12 years of conditioning it was a toy just sitting there um until the picture was taken. So but remember the first picture, there's another one I'll throw out. Just throw out little facts. I got all sorts of fun ones. I uh, think it's called product placement, right? In our the, world, exactly. Right? Oh yeah. Placement. The the first picture <laughs> the first picture of the globe was taken in nineteen seventy two. The first blue marble shot. Look it up. You know when the second picture was taken? Two summers ago. That's forty three. Was that the, was that the oh, Japanese one that I've got? Uh probably. Oh, I love it. Hey, stay with us, okay? We do have to take a break. Okay. Stick with me. 
We've got Mark Sargent. We're talking flat earth, and we're going to ask him more about the description and why is this a secret coming up here. And Antarctica, a little bit deeper into that, too, on Coast to Coast Day. We are back, and we are talking here with Mark Sargent on Coast to Coast AM. Connie Willis here talking about flat earth and Antarctica. Mark, so I'm just trying to get the visual again. So Mm -hmm. the earth is flat. There's edges. Uh, It doesn't go very deep. Uh, There is kind of uh, an enclosure uh, above us. Um, are we flo- Are we in orbit? As are we going around the sun and the moon, or are we floating in some like a no, bubble on top of the water? <laughs> no, no, it's easier. It's easier to even think of that. Think of it like, I mean, think of us like a terrarium on top of God's desk. So we are in, in a completely enclosed system, and I know the visuals are going to be a little tough on radio, but I'll try. Uh, think of the Earth, if, if you took a globe and you put your hand on the North Pole and you squashed it. So the North Pole is at the center of the dinner plate. So it's as flat as the dinner plate. And all the other continents kind of splay out and look pretty much like they do now on a globe. The only exception would be Antarctica. Antarctica wouldn't and can't be this island continent sort of like Australia. And they're actually pretty similar in size. Antarctica would fit around the entire edge like a, a giant ice continent. And I know some people are fond of saying the ice wall, you know, the whole Game of Thrones type thing. But it is kind of similar. I mean, yeah, the Game of Thrones one was much taller, but the Antarctic continent is like that. I mean, again, it's a 200 foot sheer wall of ice right off, you know, from the water. And then the whole, most of the continent is at least two miles up in, in altitude. It's plateau. It's, it's, it's an amazing continent. And then you have, you know, a dome-like structure over the top of it, a firmament made out of, and I'm using the biblical term firmament, but, you know, a dome made out of, I don't know, uh, heavy elements, heavy water, high frequency, electromagnetic field. Uh, take your pick. I don't think it's glass. But that's that's what we're covered with, and it's fairly shallow by comparison. That's why I like using the sports stadium as a com- as a as a comparison, because a sports stadium, you know, is very very wide, but it doesn't have to be very high. That sort of kind of help, kind of. Right. No. 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 So, and and how is there a way that we can prove it to ourselves? I mean, you know, people would say, "Hey, we've been out to space. We've been on the moon. How can you say?" <laughs> Have, no. have we now? How we can prove it. Oh, yeah. I'm, by, I'm sorry. By the way, and, and the sun and the moon would be inside. So I, let, oh, let me throw one be. more. Okay. Yeah, the sun and the moon would be inside. It, no different than a planetarium. And I know it dates me because you know, I used to go to planetariums back in the day. You know, the planetariums are the place most kids did, wouldn't know what they were. On weekends, you cool. would they would do things like laser Pink Floyd and laser yeah. Zeppelin. Or you'd lay on your back and they'd crank up. And, and these are the same display <laughs> systems that would display stars on a weekday would do lasers at Led Zeppelin on a on a weekend. And I mean it's the same system. You can project anything you want the, up there on the sky. Stars, comets, a moon. We can do in planetariums now just about anything you can think of in the nighttime sky. So the sun and the moon are inside the structure or at, at, at worst case just outside the structure with us kind of spinning around like a yin yang symbol. You know, where the, you, everyone knows the yin-yang symbol, you know, it's uh, you know, the sun and the moon type thing kind of spinning around the, the top of us. Very, very small, very, very close. Human beings are notoriously bad at, at determining size and perspective. So the sun isn't 93 million miles away and the moon isn't 237,000 miles away. They're almost the same size and that's why the eclipse works the way they do. People know it's like, hey, the moon fits right in front of the sun and we've always thought, oh, what a great coincidence. It's like, yeah, it's a coincidence that the moon is 400 times more narrow than the sun and it's four, exactly 400 times closer. Oh, that does work out, doesn't it? It's not a coincidence. It's, it's all part of the same system. So, Why did the space shuttle go up? I don't know, oh, no, no, I'm not time. saying, where by the way, where, uh, what's going on? Where, where, what's happening? To use the Tom Cruise line from Mission Impossible, it's worse than you know. It's it not. I'm not just saying that NASA uh, faked all, all the missions and every space agency fakes missions. I'm saying that the only reason NASA was created in the first place was to keep this thing under wraps. So the rockets are built, and, and people say, oh, no, it can't be. You're talking about every person uh, that's ever worked in, in a NASA factory or any one of the other space agencies. They've got to be in on it. It's like, no, 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 no. 
the only if you're ninety nine point nine nine percent of anybody in the space program uh, aren't in on it at all. Ignorance is bliss, and if you compartmentalize everything, it works out really really well. The only people that have to know are the telemetry guys, aka the Capricorn One movie scenario, where all the wrench turners, everyone that builds the rockets, hey, that's great. The astronauts don't go on top of the rockets. They just ditch them in the ocean somewhere, which is why when you look at the time lapse things of the rockets, they never go straight up. They go almost horizontal within the first hundred miles. And right. it's if you're if you're looking for escape velocity, you got to go up. You don't go horizontal. It's that's not the way it goes. And that's that's how it's worked so far. It's been it's been a great kept secret for a long time. Um, let me throw a quick stat out for you. The once Antarctica, the th once everything started happening in Antarctica, the first thing men would do, you know, cause that's this is what men do, is try to punch through it. Look up high altitude nuclear testing from 1958 to 1962, when the United States and the Russians for four years, all they did was fire atomic weapons straight up. That's all they did. They didn't do ground tests. They didn't water tests. They just did air tests for four years. After the third shot in 1958, NASA was formed. So after the first three shots, which were all heavy megaton shots, you know, two and three megatons, which was hard to come by in the late, late 1950s, NASA was formed because that's what you would do. You would militarize space and you would make sure that private companies were delayed as long as possible from going up there. And then in 1959, NASA announced the Van Allen radiation belts, which was a little bit of a, a giveaway. It just says, oh yeah, the Van Allen radiation belts, super, super deadly. No one should ever go up there. The same year that Antarctic treaty was put into place. No coincidences. You seal off the upper edge and the outer edge simultaneously, one quietly, one publicly, because most people don't want to go in Antarctica anyway. But that also keeps the private companies, the big companies, remember, because NASA is just accumulation of parts from the big military contractors like Boeing and General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin and those guys. You don't want those companies teaming up and saying, oh, we're going to do our own space program because sooner or later, you've got to take the picture. Which you also another thing, I know I'm jumping around a bit, there's a lot to cover and not a ton of lot of time, which is why did it take them so long? NASA was founded in 1958. Why did they wait all the way until 1972 to take the first blue marble shot? It was literally the last mission, Apollo 17. What happened to Apollo 8 through Apollo 16? They had gone to the moon and back six times and they wait till literally the last mission and they already knew in advance it was the last mission on the way home to take that first picture. And then they waited 43 years. That's two generations between pictures. And they only asked because our group told them. It's like, look, where's the pictures? Where's the videos uh, of the Earth rotating on its axis with the weather morphing? Where is any picture of any astronaut, any video of any astronaut outside a space capsule turning 180 degrees or further? Where, where are these things? They're not there. We've leaned, people automatically lean on the space programs and say, we, you know, well, we, I can prove that it's a globe through the space programs really try spend some time looking through the nasa archives we fill in the gaps with science fiction we fill in the gaps with movies that we've done from the 50s up until now most notably 2001 a space odyssey stanley kubrick that's how it started off which was released a year before apollo it is just amazing the chain of events that has happened between then and now it's uh, it's striking well, it's but funny. It, it's funny ahead. how oh go ahead no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, it's funny that, you know, when you say, hey, why don't we have these pictures where, you know, they show everything, you know, 360 degrees, where uh -huh. a lot of people would say, oh, it's because there's UFOs looking at them from the back, and you're saying, no, it's because it's the flat Earth. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. You, it's, it's, you it's, to hear it's, that, you know, you, you're, you, you got a whole different take on it. I feel bad. I feel bad for Richard Hoagland. I know he's coming to the end of his, his long and storied career. And he was supposed to debate me last year. And it is one of the few things that does not double tail into flat, flat Earth, which is the secret space program. The two cannot exist simultaneously. And even if, and I know people would say, well, this is, because coast to coast, secret space program, totally real. If it was real, then we'd have even more pictures because secret space program could take pictures just as easy. But, it, and then they just wouldn't, you know, then they can say, oh no, Apollo took this or Mercury took this or Gemini took this. But there's no pictures literally 43 years and we knew this it was confirmed because obama did a speech on it neil degrasse tyson tweeted it nasa tweeted it in uh, two, two summers ago and they said oh yeah by the way the second blue marble ever taken from space it's like 
What are you talking about? You guys have been sending probes out there supposedly for decades. You can't tell me that you went 43 years without taking a second picture of Earth. Uh, it's just, it's, um, they've, they've, they've drugged their heels for as long as they could, but unfortunately, the limited technology that has been allowed to the general public has started to catch up with them. Most not notably, high-speed internet, social media, way better camera technology. Um, if you want something to prove you or you want to get your uh, good jump start on how to prove the flat earth on the ground yeah go f go get a camera this, this is what most people this had nothing to do with the clues people just came up with this on their own go to a beach and find an object that is off in the distance and take a picture of it or a movie it doesn't really matter and then judge how much far it is and then do the calculations for yourself the curvature of the earth if you believe mainstream science is eight inches per mile squared which means it's not scary math this is algebra Every mile times itself times eight inches. So if it's two miles, it's two times two is four times eight is 32. Three times three is nine times eight is 72 inches and so on and so on. It gets steeper and steeper because remember, if it's a globe, it's got to eventually go vertical. And we found that you can look at objects that are, I don't know, 100, 150 miles away and you can see them. The, the camera technology has gotten so much better. Uh, the cheapest one out there is probably the, the Nikon P900 with 83 power zoom. You can bring ships. It's just like, okay, ship goes over the horizon. You can't see it with your naked eye anymore. Crank up the zoom. There's the ship. You know, let the go, let it go. Crank it up again. You can bring it back and again. 40, 50, 70 miles with a boat right on the water. That's impossible if it's a globe. Impossible. Because once, as you know, once it goes over the other side of the hill, I don't care what you got. You could have the biggest telescope in the world. You shouldn't be able to bring that boat back into frame. And you always can to where now I put the challenge at to any scientist. I go, show me an object at 150 miles or less, because after, you know, that the, the atmosphere gets so thick, it's like looking through water, which is pretty much like we're, we're breathing anyway. That is the go ahead. Well, is as there, you're, you're right. We don't have enough time to talk about all I, this. We, we got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff. Oh, no. Is the illusion so much that when uh, we hear that people sailed around the, the planet or flew around the planet, do we just have such an illusion and, and everybody has such an illusion that they did that? Or how can you explain if someone oh, yeah. said, hey, I sailed oh, no, that's, around or flew around the planet? That's easy, whether it be Magellan or somebody in a 777 taking a, a flight around the world. Uh, if, it's, if the world is a dinner plate and the center is the North Pole, I, room, I move my finger around the dinner plate, you know, in a complete circle. I've technically gone around the dinner plate. Does that mean the dinner plate's a ball or a sphere? No. No, it doesn't. Uh, in fact, compasses work the same way. Uh, the magnetic north, north is still the center of the plate. Uh, all the instruments work pretty much the same way. The only one that's in question, of course, is the GPS which was designed by the United States military DOD in the mid-90s. So, like the Matrix, the, the GPS system is going to tell you what it wants to tell you. And so it will turn those planes very, very slowly to the right or to the left, where you're going. But the distance is so great, no pilot would ever, ever notice it. So, it, it's we want to believe it because it's what we've been told. Again, you see the globe in your classroom, it's told, this is your home. Children don't believe in lies. They don't. Why, why would they? And since, and, and don't feel bad. I know people are going, you know, it's like, no, I've never been punked. I, you cannot punk me. It's like, no, you were born into this. This is before you and your parents and your parents' parents oh, yeah. going back 20 something generations. You, yeah. And I got, totally, and I totally get that. I totally get what you're saying. Hey, if you're taught something, that's what you think. That's what you believe. That's the way it yeah. is. Well, so who, who built it? Hmm. Well, uh, take your pick. It's only one of two answers. And that is a really advanced civilization for you alien fans out there. Uh, an advanced civilization with tech that's way beyond us. Or is it the handprint of God? Is it divine? Is it a, a proof of an intelligent design? Either way, uh, you're kind of splitting hairs there. Because honestly, if a giant golden spaceship landed in Antarctica and we filmed it, there's a lot of religious groups that would say, well, isn't that possibly could be, you know, minions of God? We don't know. But it's one of those two. I, I absolutely know it's not us that built it. We were just covering up for the last 60 years. In fact, we were so primitive, we didn't even know until about 1960. Uh, you know, remember, if you're the king of France in 1500, you have the map of the world. 
how, what are you going to do about it? You got wooden ships and horses. You can't do anything. It wasn't until the internal combustion engine came out, we got planes that we could figure this thing out. And that's exactly what we did. We, I think we had the old maps and that's why they sent them out there in the 1920s. Said, all right, find it. And up until the 1950s, they didn't know for sure. They were flying, flying, can't find it, can't find it. Well, let's just give up. Let's just make money. And of course, Murphy's Law, the second they, they decided to do that, and it's like, oh, okay, there it is. And well, that's are, we, how they... is, are we hiding it because, I mean, is it a secret because just like uh, if they know, if they, keeping the secret of aliens, okay, because the world would freak out and it would change everybody's put, thought perspective. Potentially, on Earth? potentially yes. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you wouldn't hide it. It's like, of course you would. Uh, the three three quick tracks: uh, academic, economic, and spiritual. Academically, um, uh, astronomy and astrophysics would close down tomorrow. Those doors wouldn't open. All the remaining uh, sciences: astrology. Oh, wow, astrology. Wow. No, biology, archaeology, uh, geology, hydrology. They would all have to retool from the ground up. No play on words there. Uh, then economically, you'd have to shut down world markets for a month. Spiritually, you would, uh, you know, you're also talking about f f potentially proof of God. And there's a lot of religious institutions out there that would want some vengeance, even though that's not very religious of them, want vengeance on science. Science is not going to take that chance. They, they're t the narrative is too far. It's too far along. They've, they've told people this for too many generations now. They can't go back on it. Uh, they're, they're going to protect themselves. And that's what they did. You know, no science. If somebody else had found it, yeah, maybe. But as you know, you know the thing. Look, somebody finds a substitute for, for petroleum. What's the first thing that happens? Oil and gas companies contact them. They say, look, uh, we want to buy you out. So they offer them two briefcases. You know, one has the money in it. One has a gun in it. And they say, you choose. Uh, with something like this, there is no choice. They, they weren't going to take the chance. What, is there a possibility that people would riot in the streets uh, maybe, but you know, with pitchforks and torches, I don't know why it's always pitchforks. But <laughs> but it, but it's you but it's, are but... into the movies, by the way. I gotta say, your references <laughs> to the movies are perfect. And uh, and I gotta I gotta let you know this. You know, one of the treaties, of course, uh, that people talk about, where it was like the alien treaty, mm -hmm. and it was when will disclosure come? And it will be well, we're going to be preparing the world uh, about this uh, for disclosure by. Doing, giving them all this information inside films so it won't be such a big deal when, sure. when disclosure finally happens. So sure. it's interesting knowing that treaty, you know, and I believe in that particular treaty that I have uh, read about myself, and, and you are constantly referencing it, and it's just funny to hear that because yeah. you're kind of doing what uh, this treaty said they were trying to do, to disclose yeah. the truth. This would, uh, Flat Earth is one of those amazingly open-minded tests for people. I know hard, hardcore conspiracy people listening to this show that are hardcore conspiracy people. You bring up Flat Earth to them, they're going, get out of here. It's like, really? So, you know, the royal family being lizards, that's fine. But I bring up Flat <laughs> Earth right. and you tell me to get out of the room. That's what this does. You, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mark, I love it. Well, this is Mark Sargent that we're talking to. Great information. I'm loving hearing this flat earth and Antarctica. More information coming up on our last segment uh, before the show is over. A lot of interesting stuff. So stay with us. Connie Willis here for Coast to Coast AM. It's the most listened to overnight radio program, North America, Coast to Coast AM. Hi, everybody. Connie Wills back here with Mark Sargent. We're talking Antarctica and Flat Earth. So, Mark, when you talk about that the Earth is flat, squashed down mm -hmm. from the North Pole, I like that. That's cool. The border is Antarctica all mm -hmm. the way around. Yep. And then we've got this dome over it. Right. Are we floating in in space or, like Why? you said, we're on... You know, no, that's a, that's a, no, it's a fair question. Uh, why would there have to be space, though? That, and again, it's because of the programming we all got as children, which is, look, uh, if, if space can be faked, meaning like a planetarium. Remember, if you go inside, because well, I've, I've had amateur, amateur astronomers come at me and say, look, I've seen the moons of Jupiter in my telescope, and I've seen the rings of Saturn in my telescope. I go, okay, fine. Take a pair of binoculars and go to a planetarium and look at Jupiter. 
does the binoculars make Jupiter look more or less real? And they said, well, that's not really a fair test because I'm inside a building. And I say, yeah, that's my point. Who's to say when you don't walk out of that building, you walk outside, you're just not in a much, much bigger building. And what I mean by that is if the illusion is what 99.99% .99 of the population believe, that's what you go with. You don't have to build space. You remember it was something Carl Sagan said a long time ago, which was he was, he was always puzzled about if space had these giant endless fields of nothingness, you know, between us and Mars and our solar system and the next solar system. It's just, just nothing. There's just nothing out there. It's like, yeah, because they're, they're, they're such vast distances because we can't, we can't go anywhere. If you can fake space, then that's how, what you do. You don't have, there doesn't have to be space outside of this. And then of course your follow-up question is gonna be, well, what is outside of this? If we're living inside some sort of big terrarium, some Petri dish, then what is outside? And like, well, if it was me, there'd probably be more of these things. There's probably, you know, we're, we're not, if this is not a one-off. Not only are we the, not the only people to rent this apartment, <laughs> There's probably more of these things outside. Why wouldn't you? Why, why would you build just one of them? There may be one that's, you know, in prehistoric era. There may be one that's far in the future. And they're Is probably... There anything in the Old Testament, you know, I think you said something about something with the Old Testament. Is there anything in the Bible that tells us that? Is there anything written anywhere that says anything that anybody's found? Any, any type it... of proof anywhere else on walls in the caves? Anything like that? Well, I will say this, and, and, I, and I cover this, and I don't want to turn this necessarily into a chapter and verse show. Uh, there's a great website out there called uh, testingtheglobe.com, which is not done by me. It's done by, by another guy, and he went through it with a fine-tooth comb every chapter and verse there, there is. And other than, you know, the, the first, let me throw out a, just a quick, quick ones for you. Uh, Genesis, I think 1 verse 8, uh, the firmament, which separates the waters above and the waters below. Um, Joshua, or, I'm sorry, not Joshua, the story of Joshua, where Joshua supposedly asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so that uh, he can slay more enemies. Really tough to do in an actual solar system, really easy to do in an enclosed system. Uh, how about the Tower of Babel? Tower of Babel is supposedly, you know, a giant structure leading to heaven, right? Well, if the earth is spinning on its axis at a thousand miles an hour and going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour, where is that building going exactly? It's going nowhere. It's going multiple places all the time. Um, unless you're in an enclosed system, Witten Cage is just trying to reach the ceiling. Uh, there's so many other little examples I could give, but here, my, one of my favorites would be uh, Werner von Braun. His headstone, this is not a religious man necessarily. His headstone, very, very modest, is the year he was born, the year he died, and it says Psalms 19.1. I didn't know what it was. I had to look it up. Psalms 19.1, it says, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Why would the father of NASA, ex-Nazi rocket scientist, be talking about a domed structure from the grave? He never talked about that in his public life, but there, there it is. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, but as far as, what what you're asking here's a quick example for you and i don't think i've said this in any other thing which is as far as other worlds outside of this one um i and i don't know the, exactly the chapter in the verse but i know the quote and there's my father's house has many or my father's mansion has many rooms and for me that just talks about you know that there's more than one world out there that that there's a whole bunch of worlds but they are like ours very condensed like 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 an egg crate type of thing eggs in an egg crate how about that where they're right next to each other but we can't get there and they can't get here i don't think because uh, some people you know why why the dome over the top some people say why why not why no why a dome at all it's like well there's two schools of thoughts there um one we could be a box of kittens that needs to be protected from what's outside of here or we could be a box of scorpions that really shouldn't be allowed to run freely anywhere and I, honestly, given our history, I'd kind of go with the latter. I'd think that we're a little bit too dangerous. And we've talked about that in science fiction movies for years. Uh, the most famous one being The Day the Earth Stood Still, where another race came and said, yeah, you guys aren't going to be allowed to explore <laughs> because you just wreck everything. Mostly men. I give women a pass. So, sorry. That's my little, <laughs> my little ramble. What? How do you, that's okay. How do you explain <laughs> meteorites? How do you explain stars in the sky? What about oh. the astronauts? Sure, sure, sure. Stars in the sky would be just part of the light system. Again, no different than a planetarium. Same thing with planets, just brighter lights. 
Meteors, well, comets are just another part of the light show anyway. Again, we can do comets in, in, uh, in a planetarium. Meteors, pff, throwing rocks into an aquarium. You know, just use a high velocity, whatever device you want, call it a rail gun, but use a piece of metal ore, fire at a shallow trajectory, let the atmosphere do the rest with friction. Try not to aim in any major cities, which is why that one in Russia a few years back was a little dicey, but it didn't land like all the others. Uh, the rest of the stuff is pretty easy. And most of this would be an automated system on top of it. You don't need say, it. So, yeah, is it non-human? It's kind of like we were talking about the cryptocurrencies. How it's, you know, it's not run by, it's, you know, non-manned, um, unmanned is, is what they most say. Of, is it, most of, most. Because you don't think people are throwing rocks or you don't think humans are behind it, right? No, 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 no. no the, most of this would be an automated system, which works better in an enclosed circular system than it would be a sphere. Uh, no different, like the, the jet stream in the upper atmosphere. Uh, automated system, the underwater conveyor system, which runs all the currents in the oceans, even, and I know I catch some hell for this, even the magma system. Remember, if the deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles, I mean, the magma system wouldn't be organic either. Say, well, no, no, volcanoes there, that have to be organic. It's like, no, it wouldn't. Because remember, one super volcano and this, this show is over. The last thing you'd want to do is leave the, the magma system organic. So it's all part of a giant automated clockwork system the the sky the stars and the plants in the sky are just part of a wonderful elaborate inspirational clock uh, and everything down below is to keep us acting naturally which is by the way one other question i should throw in there before the end which is why would the globe model be introduced at all and i think the builders of this place helped introduce it because of it because it buys them time Look, we, we only became really interesting in the last 500 years as a civilization, and that's when this thing kind of was put into place by Copernicus back 500 years ago. It's like you have eventually you've got to get people away from the idea that there's an edge because we do love exploring. Human beings are very, very curious, more than cats, I think, and they'd love to reach the edge if possible. So what's the, the, the best solution for getting away from that? Tell them there is no edge. You can go around all you want. You're never, ever going to find it. For most people, that's enough. It's like, oh, yeah, I was, I was told there's no edge, so there's nothing to explore. Sort of like the Truman Show. It's like, well, you know, because he wanted to be an explorer. It's like, no, everything's already been discovered. That's all you tell people. It's like, no, everything's been mapped out. You don't have to look anymore. That reduces the most of the population from exploring anything. And, of course, the subtle things like uh, subtle design features, which I thought were really, really clever. Adding 3% salt solution to the oceans limits uh, ocean exploring by 90 something percent because you can't drink what you're sailing on remember most of the early early ship stuff was limited to how much fresh water you could carry and there was a lot of ships that went down because of that you can't because human three percent yeah fish can still survive but humans can't drink it it's a fascinating look into it i mean people really should again when you're looking at this treat it like a court case can you prove the globe in a court of law can you and while you're at it Try to do it without using the space program, like NASA. See if you can do it, because it's going to be tough. Um, let me use a little quick, quick quote from George Orwell. 1946, he's, he wrote in a, in a Tribune over in England. He said, uh, it's an interesting responsibility about science. He was not a flat earther. He goes, you go to the average person on the street, and you say, how do you know the Earth is a globe? Everyone's first response is always the same. Well, we know. Duh. If we, why are you even asking? And if you press it, they get angry. And he goes, he, he was talking about the responsibility of science there. I thought it was more interesting because 1946 was 12 years before NASA was even founded. So how did everybody know before NASA was founded that it was a globe? How do you know it was a globe before NASA? It was because you were told, plain and simple. Everything else, we, you know, a lot of things we can test, but we take science's word for it we take it at face value it's like why would they lie to us it's science they would never lie to us there, there's no question in every classroom every classroom there was a globe without yeah. a doubt there was always a globe well uh, speaking of a globe what about glo global warm warming you know people that is global warm. Does that oh yeah yeah that? i do that hurt I, that? How's that i do that? i i do from a uh, from a flatter stamp an enclosed world system in fact it's even more dire in an enclosed world system think of it like this an enclosed world everything's compressed in here with us the atmosphere the whole nine yards remember if it's an automated system that system has to adjust to whatever's happening and we've been generating a whole bunch of heat 
for the last hundred years. Uh, you remember, the, your, your car engine is just a furnace. That's all it is. And we have billions of them running all the time. And, and you're thinking, well, it doesn't make that much difference. I go, well, yeah, it does not, not a month here and a month there. But over a hundred years, as we keep making more and more of them, sure. It'd be no different than uh, bringing a propane lantern into a car your car air conditioning system is going to have to compensate for the heat that that thing is generating. Well, when that happens, you're going to run into, it's going to do weird things. It's going to blow really cold air on the people in front unless you have your, adjust your vents. And we're, I think we're seeing that all over the world right now where the system is trying to adjust for the extra energy we're putting into it. And because of that, we're seeing erratic weather patterns. I mean, you want to call it global warming, yeah. I mean, I know they've been kind of renaming it climate change, but look, I mean, most of the record temperatures this year, and I mean 90-something percent of them, have been record highs. And I think it's just part of the automated system, and we're going to have to deal with this sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. Well, when you, you know, the sun's out, you feel that heat, it feels so good, you know, so they've got... <laughs> It, I, I, I got, I got a, the sun pretty good. <laughs> I got a tan on Halloween day and I'm up in Seattle. That has never, ever happened before. It wasn't even close. It wasn't like, Hmm, maybe I should go there or not. I mean, I was actually out there with a, with a lawn chair and a towel and I was baking. It was like 70 something degrees in, in Seattle. I've never seen a summer like this up here. It's, it's really, really, really strange. So yes, I do believe in, in climate change, global warming, whatever you call it, but it does fit into the enclosed world very easily. I can see how it would fit in enclosed. I don't believe it otherwise, but that's a whole nother show. So listen, yeah. hey, I want to ask you, how is it that people can find you? People can find me. Uh, easiest way is to just go into Google and type in flat earth clues. That will take you eventually to my YouTube channel. It's Mark Sargent. It's my name. Uh, the community, though, is way bigger than me. And so I'll literally just go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth, and have fun. Because there is a wall of content there, which I'm sure most of you didn't even know existed. And all my contact information is there, my email address, my phone, uh, everything you need. And um, <clears throat> eventually, you'll you'll find what you need from it. Yeah, if you haven't found his phone number on a 7-Eleven, a restroom, bathroom, or anything like that, you will find yeah, it thanks. on the internet all over. It's plastered. Right. <laughs> I still think that's hilarious that it's out there. I was like, Mark, really? That's your number. It, but, I yeah. will keep that number out there until my phone becomes unusable. How's that? Oh, I, I think it's great. I really do. I'm only uh, smiling in a good way. So um, anything else you want to tell everybody as your last words here of uh, what to look for that maybe we didn't talk about? Yeah, before? yeah. Like don't, don't take my word for it. Don't believe a word I say. In fact, don't. I'm going to use reverse psychology on you, and it's going to work. Do not Google Flat Earth. Because it, do your own research and ask questions. The stuff I, and I put that at the end of everything I do. Do your own research. Don't take anything I say at face value. Dig into it yourself. Try to prove the globe. See where it takes you. But it's not for the faint of heart. I got to warn you. It's Pandora's box. You open it. You're not going to be able to close it again. But we do have humans that know about it. They know <laughs> that this is flat. And they're keeping they do. the secret. People like me. But no proof visually. Nope. Theory. Nope. Nope. Theory. It's still, it's still a theory. But you, you see, I mean, it's been resonating. I mean, there's fact that we had a conference, and there's, you know, in, in North Carolina, there's going to be another one in England, here in the spring, which I'm speaking. I'm one of two Americans that's going to be speaking at it. Uh, it resonates. I'm telling you, it is a weird thing. You think it's absolutely ridiculous until you start looking in it, and then you'll be emailing me. Same, well, I love the yeah. stuff that you put up. I love your, your clues. I really do. I think they're great, and they do give Thanks. you something to think about. So I think uh, I like that. So it's, it's just funny. I know you said you're a conspiracy guy, and out of mm -hmm. all the conspiracies out there, tough stuff and, you know, people that battle and debate over and over again, you just thought, yeah, I'm going to stick with Flat Earth and uh, kind of go there for a while. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's what I wanted to do. If you would have told me three years ago, <laughs> Flat Earth, I would have said, you're insane. And yet here I am, 160 interviews later. Uh, well, I appreciate you talking with us. I very, I really do. It's nice talking to you, and uh, you're very kind, very nice. It comes across, and uh, it's a, a joy talking to you. And I'll be looking up your stuff. So I'm subscribed to you. 
thank you very much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. You take care, and we'll have you back, I'm sure, before you know, before long here on Coast to Coast. Thank you very much, and good luck tomorrow with the flat Earth and the rocket going up. Crossing my fingers. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank All you very right. much. That was Mark Sargent with Flat Earth and Antarctica. A lot of inf- interesting information. It was it was really neat because there's so many things that we've talked about here on Coast to Coast, and and uh, I know this has been talked about as well. But for me, I haven't talked about it, and to just learn something brand new that I never even thought about. Yeah, it was very interesting. If you get a chance to go to his YouTube channel, check it out and any of his other.